Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have our updated strategy and weak point guide for taking on the automaton scum, where we'll be covering everything from which enemies spawn in each mission to the best ways to deal with them and their advanced stats so that you're always locked in. Every text guide you see in this video will also be linked down below and is always updated in my Discord first for when I need to make small changes to them. So lighting this off fast, we'll start with the most important thing, and that is the constellations or spawn seeds. This determines which enemies you'll be running into every time you drop in. That way it's not a surprise when you see a ton of factory striders or something everywhere. And even though this information isn't shown, there is patterns to it. This is also pieced together from like ridiculous amounts of hours just kill farming every single mission since launch and noting down what has spawned in each mission and as time goes on i will continue to keep this updated as close as possible to what i'm seeing in game so that way we can have a solid way of predicting what we're diving into i've also covered this every single update since march 6 and have always kept an updated version of this sponsor guide in my discord but this is the final version of the guide because it can be so quickly updated that way i can snap through it on hotfixes so easily and Ervin's community also made a more visual version of this and all of that's included in the scrolling imager link. Now this is mainly focused on tier 10 because that's all I play but it can be scaled down to some of the lower tiers. It covers your average patrols, POI spawns, and drops that rotate between what we have listed here with the key text at the bottom telling you what you're going to be running into. But to explain how these spawn weights work I have a separate guide key explaining the theoretical way to guess what you'll run into. I've done this on stream it's again like March and it's about 90% accurate 100% of the time. So assume that if you have a very high chance of getting something in a mission that it can affect the other missions in the set. For instance, the new launch has a very high chance at double the amount of hulks with tons of berserkers everywhere, where the majority of POIs, patrols, and columns will have two hulks with a bunch of berserkers beside them getting called in all the time. The Retrieve Valuable Data mission also has a high chance of Berserker Seed as well, so there is a very high chance that these two missions affect each other and let you assume that all three missions will have the same enemies. But if we had something like, let's say, Nuke with the Command Bunkers as one of the second missions, then there is a chance for the Nuke to flip over to Devastator Spam or for something like an anomaly to happen where you'll have Devastators and Hulks everywhere, with patrols having two Hulks and a bunch of Devastators behind them. The more you play, the more you'll see the consistency behind these spawn weights, with the only inconsistency being the defense mission having the most randomness but that almost always spams rocket striders anyway so it just is what it is um another thing to note is that gunship patrols also use to force heavy armor seeds and they do this on and off between different hot fixes as of the patch of this video is being made on they don't do that but every time they do i'll do a quick update to the guide key for it so that's just the general theory and idea of how spawn seeds work and if you have any questions make sure to ask just so i can bring them up on stream or maybe in a separate video but now we have to talk about the best way to blow all of their backs out because that's the most important thing about the game if you're not killing all the enemies you're really just not doing it right so when you're engaging patrols the spawn seed won't really matter because bots almost always march in a straight line together. It's very easy to set up precision strikes or eagle strikes to wipe pretty much anything that you can see out and just W keying them for the most part works. But in general, I think the best way to deal with bots is just to have a good priority list because sometimes their aggression radiuses are just crazy on some of the patches. So number one over anything else is just to shoot down dropships with factory striders attached to them because it just instantly kills them. After that, in order you want to cook off factory strider gatling guns, rocket striders, Riders, Gatling Devastators, and then Barrager Tanks. Outside of that, the rest of the prio I personally use is listed on the screen. Removing this stuff in order keeps you alive way longer, and as for the major column mechanic, it's just going to be flares. All of the soldier bots are able to pop these off and are very easy to interrupt with any kind of stagger. So open field or small POIs can be referred to as like level one columns. It will usually be very light on enemies. Medium or level two POIs will have a couple of drop ships, and large or level three POIs like bases and stuff will have really large columns with tons of enemies flying in with mega bases having the most ridiculous amount of enemies drop in on you. You can see their little radius based on the heat map when you open your mini map as well. And when you see me play on stream, I try and bait columns on the large POIs to get more enemies to fight, but that's probably not how most people want to play. It's just what I find the most fun. So what I will recommend is that if you're learning the game, tearing up difficulties, or just want an easy lobby, bait flares off of big POIs into the open field. That way there's less dudes and you could just clean it up really fast. You'll have roughly two minutes depending on what point of the game you're at before the next flare can go up because it has an internal cooldown. Detector towers will also just spam call in like tons of enemies. This is just like the best part of the game. So if you don't want to kill farm, these are a massive priority to remove. And 
when you do get practice and want to fight more stuff, you can leave the detector towers up and just have the craziest, most epic battles. If you're going to do that, you do need to learn the best way to kill everything, so we'll start with the dropship. Killing these is the coolest, most cinematic part of the entire game, and when you kill them, all of their passengers also fall to their death. But if you do kill too many dropships, the game crashes. The limit on these seems to be roughly 40 to 50, because smoke and pieces don't despawn correctly for the host, and performance just keeps getting worse as the game progresses as you kill more of these. So so make sure that if you're obliterating tons of dropships, you are trying to leave the mission before that 30 minute mark. This is almost the exact same thing as one to one is like the shrieker bug that happened when the dark fluid mission was active, where their pieces wouldn't despawn correctly and you would just crash the mission if you were kill farming. So eventually when they do fix this, I will do an updated video with some other tips and things that you can do. But for now, I just recommend killing the dropships with the biggest threats on them, like factory striders. All you have to do is hit the main body or a thruster with a recoils or a quasar and they'll just go right into the abyss just be careful not to hit the little clamps on the side of them to keep the bots attached because sometimes that just doesn't register damage to the main dropship. As for the gunships, they all die pretty quickly to anything with AP 3 or 4 and are vulnerable to a ton of primaries and any decent support weapon just completely obliterates them. They will pry up flying at you when they die, so they'll try and crash into you, which is super cool, but that's just something to keep in mind. And they will also run out of rockets after the fourth time they blast off of them. These are also very easy to bait, so you just have to do like a run in one direction and then cut the other way, and then the rockets will always miss you. And then after that, they'll just try and blast you with lasers. When we take this battle to the ground, we have the coolest enemy in the entire game, the Factory Strider, which is also the deadliest. A lot of its pieces have multi-stage armor that you have to break first, which is why we're going to lock in and not shoot the head armor when we don't have to. This will save us a ton of ammo because the eye is very easy to hit and should be prioritized with any AP4 plus weapon because it just <laughs> is the easiest way to kill them. Things like the AMR railgun and laser cannon all rip the eye fairly quickly, and things like the recoils rifle just flat out one shot it. But if you do miss the eye and hit the head armor with a recoils, for instance, a second rocket anywhere to the head after the armor is broken will just instantly kill it. And in the process of that, if you don't have rockets, make sure you shoot off the Gatling machine guns. Getting rid of these removes almost all of this thing's kill pressure, and they're super easy to remove with any of the medium peen weapons. It's honestly just the highest priority out of anything on the map because of how lethal they are these cause death spirals these are the number one thing that i die to out of noting down everything that kills me these are the number one so removing them is your number one priority and that's what i always focus on because after they're gone the thing's just a free kill now next up is the side armor and once it's broken you can blast it with any ap3 or like a second rocket will just instantly remove it but you'll know it's damaged because it just visually changes and is very easy to take advantage of the next weak points are going to be the joints and the feet from the front those joints are only accessible when its legs are extended and should just honestly be completely ignored the feet can be one shot from the back of them but they can also clip into the floor making them take no damage and once you're practiced getting around the behemoth is super easy and stomach shots are the best way to take it down with pretty much any rapid fire weapon honestly just any weapon and deletes it when you shoot it in the bay and this is honestly the best way to kill it even with the flamethrower so you can have a true cooking showdown the only thing you have to watch out for is the turn speed and getting knocked over by the feet and if you are far away the cannon on its back will last like one to five times depending on the patch but i ignore the cannon for the most part and just go deep because once you remove the gatling turrets fighting these things is a walk in the park Moving on to the Notorious Barrager tank, this thing's rockets make no sense and have crazy knockback radius. So its turret is the main thing you want to shoot because even though they said they fixed it, sometimes the turret lives even if you kill the body. Any of the big anti-tank completely detonates it and it almost dies instantly to most strats when it gets hit directly. Now, the engine is that secondary option if you have nothing that can pop the turret, just be careful because if the turret keeps moving, it's still trying to rocket you and can clip through itself. So in general, you should always have at least a Thermite or an AT5 to pop the turret with if you're queuing into pretty much like any bot mission and should prioritize that over anything else. The standard tank is one of the coolest models in the game and probably the most well-balanced enemy. The big glowing heat sink makes a super obvious weak point and is just the flat out best way to take this thing down. Excuse you, sir. Puppies. Ow. Ow. And there is also a G-spot on the top back half of the turret for any weapon with any kind of explosion radius that splashes into the heatsink, which lets you kill it from more angles. The main attack of the cannon is also very telegraphed when it's trying to take your freedom away with the glowing cannon strike. If you see it start turning red, just wait about half a second and then dodge or get behind something, you'll end up being okay. And as you rush the tank, its turret traverse speed is so slow that it's super easy to just run circles around it. Just avoid the machine gun because it will delete you pretty quick. Now, as for the shredder tank, 
it hurts way more. It's not telegraphed at all. It just starts blasting super fast and it has ridiculously fast turret rotation speed. But if you do get up close to it, you can hug the sides in the engine and it can't shoot down on you. And it's also super easy to splash this thing's heatsink from the sides, even from the front in some cases, and you can just completely delete it like that. And all of the other armored locations are just like the other tank, so a good rocket can knock it out no problem. Usually the best way to deal with all four of the big armor is just to toss an Eagle Airstrike or a Gatling Barrage and forget about it, but for the times that you can't, it's good to know how to deal with them. Moving along our armor chain, we have two Hulk variants, the Flamethrower Hulk, which all you need to do is dive after getting lit on fire to put it out and either chest plate it with a rocket or shoot its eye up for an easy, fast kill. You'll see a lot of these scattered all over the place and it's a super common enemy on T10, but if you do get into trouble and one of these pushes you out of position, try and turn its back to your teammates so they can initiate Operation Backshots. This massive heat sink on its back can be killed by even light arms fire, and after you do blow this out, it will stay active for a little bit in a weird wobbly way and will one shot you if you get close enough to it, but you can keep shooting it to just finish it off faster. You can also blow its little legs out to immobilize it with any AP4+, and this is where you want to shoot it with the flamethrower for the true cooking showdown. These are also explosive immune now, so when you start blasting with grenades, you're not actually trying to blow its legs out, you're trying to splash its heatsink. But in general, I don't think the Flame Hulk is super dangerous unless you let a meat spin you. The real danger comes in with that Laser Rocket Hulk. It just spams forever and is insanely accurate with crazy damage, but dies in the exact same ways. A quick trick I use with the revolver and any of the 30% recoil reduction armor is just to crouch and aim for the bottom of that red eye and spray down the magazine. This removes it without thinking and is the easiest way to do it with anything sub a rocket, like all of the other weapons that I've used don't have an easier time with this than the revolver. Moving on to the Devastators, we have three variants, Normal, Rocket, and Gatling. Normal stops appearing on tier 10 altogether and can only be spawned by factory striders. The head is the obvious weak point here, but the stomach and legs can also be blown out for fast kills. As for the Rocket Devastator, it has the same weaknesses as the normal one, but that's rockets. These go kind of crazy, but can easily be baited, and you can also shoot the rocket backpack off of them. And when we talk about Gatling Devastators, the shield is made out of General Brash's armor, so you kind of want to shoot it in the head. It does flinch a lot more now, making full auto guns feel kind of weird until you get used to it, but you should just try and snipe their head out as fast as possible. And what I try and do now is whenever I have AP3+, plus, I just spray down into the armor piece, and if you get a lucky headshot, it is what it is. It's just the best way to deal with them and the fastest way to remove them from the field. The Gatling gun will also mulch you down, so do not try and trade with it. You will lose. And if you do engage it on a bad angle, you can just shoot the little Gatling machine gun off. And if you're in an even worse position, you can shoot his little footsie out under the shield if you need to, and that'll kill him just as fast as anything else. Now, moving on to the Rocket Strider, it's a lot squishier than you think it is. These super cringe rockets do CC you from a ridiculous range through walls and ragdoll you into the open, just making you kind of unable to play your character to death. So that's why these are a very high priority for removal. Someone named Hypey Cat in my chat did bring it to my attention that when you try and shoot the rockets off, the explosion was not happening sometimes. And it's important to bring this up because this only happens when the railing is shot off and not the rocket. AP3 Plus can destroy it, and this makes it so that the rockets are visually despawned, but can still be fired at you. <laughs> And then you and you also can't blow them up anymore. I also usually just shoot the leg joints when I am using P3 Plus because shooting the railing off is super annoying. And the main armored compartment needs AP4 and more damage to take it out, but a lot of things can blow through that pretty easily. This enclosed compartment also makes the pilot explosive immune, whereas the regular striders that don't appear on tier 10 at all uh, can be splashed off no problem. These are way less dangerous than their counterpart because they don't have a cringe rocket, and you can either shoot the leg joint out or flank them and easily kill the driver. And no, we still can't drive these ourselves because of the fun police. Moving on to Berserkers, they will menacingly flush you out of cover or Twitter users out of their safe space and out into the open to get blasted, mostly by explosive back shots, and nobody wants that. You can headshot these, but it does wobble around quite a bit, and it's kind of a bait if you aren't aiming carefully because you usually just hit the armor beside it, which soaks a ton of damage to the main health pool. So if you aren't a precision aimer, shoot for its stomach and you won't have any problems. Also, do not try and melee these guys. <laughs> like, it's a little bit of a disaster. Now, as for the regular soldiers, the Chrome versus the normal variants, uh, the only difference I really noticed was that the machine gun guy was like way more accurate in the Chrome version. Outside of that, though, they're pretty much the same, like same health pool and everything. Uh, these are technically super dangerous and will be the main source of chip damage that you take when there's a lot of them swarming. You don't really see a ton of them in tier 10 anymore, which is surprising to me because these are one of the most dangerous enemies when there's a ton of them because they interrupt like all of your stims and reloads, so do not sleep on removing these as fast as possible. Also, any trooper with a jetpack will explode and light you on fire, and the pack is very vulnerable and dies super fast, and 
if it gets ticked with a laser even for like half a second it instantly explodes so that covers pretty much all of the weak points and all the things i regularly do to kill all the enemies in the game and as long as you follow good habits by following that kill priority your games will progress way smoother but there's a few other things you can do to make sure that the game always goes in your favor bringing the vitality enhancement stamina enhancement and experimental infusion boosters completely change the dynamic of the game and pre-stimming for the dr from ei will let you take ridiculous amounts of damage and push through some of the most obnoxious situations these are the big three that make the gameplay completely different and in my opinion are mandatory against every mission that you're going to take them into the final slot can be flexible but i think that help on space optimization is pretty much the go-to fourth just in case you randomly get one shot at a need a tactical reset and after doing some extensive kill farm tests heavy explosive resistance armor is just the flat out best thing to have equipped in the entire game the overall damage reduction of explosions and headshots keeps you alive through ridiculous situations and this is the armor you see me wearing all the time on stream i highly recommend getting used to playing in it and when your stamina gets low just stim uh you don't have to like play normally just keep stimming for movement but if you really hate wearing heavy armor to the point where you just can't for some reason lock in with the medium 150. the biggest tip i can give you for not instantly dying to the bots is anytime you see a red bloom or a rocket cooking some kind of bloom on your screen dive away from them so that whatever does hit you hit your legs or your arms they take a lot less damage than your chest and your head and this will keep you alive like way more than anything else and the next part of this is how to utilize cover properly a massive issue is that a lot of these explosions send you flying across the map through cover so just make sure that you're a few steps back from it or you end up in the shadow realm and if you do get caught out in the open irrelevant to your move speed this wiggle will keep you alive most of the shots can be baited once you learn the game and pay attention to it so the sooner you start doing this the better and if you watch me stream you see me do this weird little circle move and everything just flies around me like some sort of matrix movie this baits the shots around me and i usually do this when i'm reloading and there's no gatling lasers on the field if there is a gatling devastator or a factory strider this won't work so just make sure that that's the situation that you use it in. I also almost always take in the Senator with Thermite for those emergencies because it stops death spirals. You can land with those two things and completely flip basically any situation. And I usually heavily lean into Supply Backpack so that I can slam Stimmies because they're definitely not addictive. Now, if you do choose one of my builds, they cover every situation possible with a ground kit and almost infinite resources to W key through literal nightmare situations. These builds are made for you to kill the most enemies possible and just win. So that does cover pretty much everything you need to know about the bots and crushing super hell dives my way. So that way, hopefully one day you can be as majestic as General Rash. Also, if you have any questions or anything to add, just hit me up in the comments so I can make a note of it and just go over it on my next stream. That way I can visually show you what I was trying to talk about if you misunderstood it in any way. And if you do notice any mistakes in the text guides, just let me know so I can fix them. It's really not that big of a deal. If there is any kind of small problem, I'd rather be more accurate. That way everybody has the best possible information all the time. And whenever they add a new enemy or update, I will make sure all of this stuff is updated and it will be updated in my Discord first before the video comes out. A lot of you that have been here for a while know that I just want to bridge that gap for people that don't have all day to play the game, but still want to play on the hardest difficulty with their friends. So I genuinely hope this helped you out, but that's going to be all for now. And I wish you the best of luck out there.